Good morning from Colorado Custom Coachworks. The door. This damn door. You don't know that this door caused me a lot of stress. <clears throat> it's a very tricky situation. This used to be the top. This is going to be the top. I'm just doing a 180 with it because we didn't uh, correctly go through this and we didn't correctly mount it before. It almost shook off on the drive here. So anyways, that's one thing. That's going to take me a couple days because i got to work on the roof too. So that's what I'm doing today. Let's go check in with Eric. Eric, what's going on in the wood shop today? Well, good morning. Uh, <laughs> good morning. Well, I have a little bit of a gap at my joint here. Okay. Um, and so one of the little ways of, of uh, besides just filling with material, is uh, they call it burnishing. Basically, you take a tool similar to, to that and essentially kind of work it in along the edge of the, of the points. Oh, yeah. And it kind of like kind of pushing closes, it together. Yeah, huh? it essentially closes up those those gaps. It works better with hardwoods like this um, because it's uh, it, it pretty much stays where you put it more or less. But it's a way to help to uh, you know to clean up clean up a corner that might not be uh, as pretty as you like. Yep. Awesome. And, uh, all right, cool. And uh, guys, I apologize for the noise. It is a shop. We're not the only ones working here. These guys are raising roofs over here and all kinds of cool stuff. By the way, if you guys need a roof raise, these guys are the top dogs. Um, what else are you working on today? Countertop number two? Yeah, countertop. Well, we'll also get the, uh, the chessboard opened up and get to that sand. It's smooth. Um, yep. It's kind of buried under the weight of our, <laughs> our uh, you know, instead of a heavy-duty press, we've just got uh, the, the primitive press where we've got... Uh, <laughs> couple different chunks of wood and some heavy weight on there just yep. to keep it uh, to hold it all down so cool and if if you guys didn't see uh, the previous video this is a uh, inset chess table I'm not even really all that great at chess although I was in the middle school chess club <laughs> definitely forgot all whatever everything I learned but uh, I'll be playing Rob Lavender out at the uh, Jamie's van build over at or uh, at RTR so if anybody's up for uh, a game come on over <laughs> That is one badass looking uh, chess table. Uh, probably a first in a school bus. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, uh, this is Miles. Miles came to help out. Uh, son of Reed. Happy to have you, man. Thank you. So, uh, anyways, I'm going to get back working on that window. It's a pain in the butt. Also, I took, uh, cleaned this up a bit. I got a little latch for that, which is this thing. I'm not sure it's the best, but, you know, we haven't installed it yet. Here's how the inside looks as of yesterday's work. Yeah, and, uh, most of the plumbing lines are in. Just got to put a propane line up top. Put a bunch of uh, you know tiles in for the bathroom and stuff like that. He's apparently Miles is a really good tiler apparently. So, um, but uh, we're looking pretty good in here. All right. So as you guys know, I am not a tradesman. I'm learning as I'm going, and uh, I'm sure someone's going to have something to say about this <laughs> little setup. Maybe even the fact that I'm using wood to clamp it together, I probably should be using metal. Whatever. Anyways, I got these things clamped together, press them, and then I'm just going to fill every single little gap here with a weld, and then sand it when I'm done so it looks nice and smooth and clean. I'm also going to have to fill these holes. I'm going to have to make new holes up here, and uh, I almost wish I could pull this whole thing out and redo it, but... Uh, I really don't want to go that far with it. So I don't know if you can see that, but uh, I did all the rest there. It looks super chunky. We got JT helping out because I, I just can't get the speed and the and the temperature right. It's coming out super chunky and bubbly, and I don't know. But it's also sheet metal, so that can't be fun. We're gonna get the pro dialing it in here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the correct way <laughs> to weld sheet metal to uh, that uh, box iron. 
Looks like I have to just go piece by piece. Or pretty good right there. Yeah. Um, you're gonna want to do it just like that. Oh wow, yeah, it looks metal. good. Um, you can't. You're not gonna be able to stay on it. Otherwise, you blast through it kind of over here, right? Yeah, you'll burn through, and then also you just uh, pretty much aim for your gap. Okay. And you know, just let it penetrate good. Stop, move over, let it penetrate good. And you can keep a steady pace just like this all the yep. way through. Okay. Let's see. That is a lot better looking right there than this stuff over there. <laughs> <laughs> See what's going on in here, Miles. What's going on, man? He's creating a pan. Creating a pan. Come over here. That's a good thing your name isn't Peter. Otherwise, you can make a computer pan. <laughs> so basically, what you do you you cover the seam first, mm -hmm. and then you have these little funky uh, like corner pieces. Yep. And you literally just put mastic all over it and puts it all together to where this thing will literally be a shower pan when it's all done. It's That's all set. Pretty awesome. So yeah, looks like we're pretty watertight. Those are the corner pieces uh, Reed was talking about. Those are pre-made, they come in a little package. And uh, yeah, moving right along here. Shooter Curdy. So while I was uh, outside working on some of the metal work, looks like this part is done here too. Uh, we're gonna have to run a couple of wires through. Well, it popped right off these two screws. Yep. Popped oh, off. that's it. It's just held in place by two screws? Two screws. Awesome. So uh, we were talking about this, and what we're going to do is uh, uh, use, uh, yeah, the, have the two screws here, and then just finish nail this stuff in. So if I ever need to rip it off or fix it or access it, I can just take it off, put it back together. No, you know, no big deal. You know, one of uh, Uncle Dan's favorite sayings was, fail to plan, plan to fail. Unless your name is Reed and Jax. Right. Because we did fail to plan, but we are not planning on failing. We're planning on conquering. What we did was... <laughs> I, 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 we talked about this a couple times, but uh, I forgot to remind Reed that we had to drill a hole through the floor, through the metal, and leave a hole in here for the drain to the um, composting toilet. So I just was under the bus. Reed threw me under the bus. Again. <laughs> so basically we're going through a couple layers, right through that X mark right there, and then everything's going to be fine, you know? But I know, Steampunk Steve, when you watch this, you're going to have a good laugh and say, Oh yes, sounds about right. Alright, good news. We're making progress on that hole. And uh, we got Miles over here cutting tile. Uh, you can't really see in this one, but uh, take my word for it. He's cutting away here. He's got some special fancy tile cutter. <laughs> it looks like an aquarium pump here, too, to pump the water in. Fixing up this uh, edge. Uh, this used to be the top part. This is where uh, those disastrous holes were. <laughs> um, and so, uh, yeah, I'm just welding on more material, making more of a flat edge, adding a bit of material, and uh, then this will become the top. Um, we, we missed the um, uh, one by one. <laughs> Couldn't think. We missed the uh, one by one iron box iron when we tried to go through here and thread it and also the threads didn't work out so I'll just go through I found the midpoint here by peeling this up right on the side um, so 2.5 inches in um, and that is where the beam is I'll do the same thing over here 
drill through, mount it, make it look nice and pretty. Let's go check in on Eric. How's it coming along? Good. Yeah. Somebody got a new haircut too. <laughs> Had a few hairs removed. Yeah. Uh oh. Uh -oh. So that, that adjusts the up down. You stuck in there? Hey, let me give you a hand. Thing, uh, up and running. Eh, maybe it was too tight, who knows. Yeah. But uh, yeah, broke the fuse. So uh, this is looking amazing. Anybody want to play me uh, some chess or checkers? Come on out to uh, Jamie's fan build party or the RTR. Or flag me down when you see me driving on the road on the freeway and uh, we'll make sure to play a game of uh, checkers or chess on a custom chess table. You know, Sometimes in life where you just have to abandon mission, take an L, and uh, divert course. No, I'm not talking about the bus life. I'm talking about this window. This window is effed. Man, everything about this window is, is it doesn't match the rest of the bus. It is just, it looks like I got it out of a junkyard, unfortunately. It's just a very, I'm not a metal person. Even it would be hard for these guys to to make it look good. Well, I don't know about hard, but it, it, you know, it would take a lot of work. It's beyond my expertise level, beyond my skill set. I did the best I could to make a, a nice line here, but that's not the issue. The issue is I filled these holes and I have this gigantic bump here and here. This one's not so bad, but the whole thing dips waves, you know, whatever. It just it's dented. It doesn't match my perfectly not dented bus. So, I'm gonna take a, I was talking with JT over here at Colorado Custom Coach Works. He said he would, if it was him, he'd probably just put sheet metal over the thing and then cut out an RV window. I'm thinking that might be the best idea. And uh, might only cost me a couple hundred bucks for that. So, hmm, at least I can toss this thing out, start fresh. Wow, look at that floor. Dude, Miles, you're the man. Thanks for your help. Really appreciate it. Yep, awesome. Miles was just saying this is the nicest shower he's seen in a house bus. I would agree with him. This is pretty damn nice. Oh, yeah, just wait till all the rest of the towels go on. Yeah, it's going to be great. <laughs> The uh, countertop in. This is what it looks like without a stain, without an epoxy finish on it. We're just kind of test fitting. Let's go check out and see what Eric is up to. All right, so I just sanded this thing down with two, all the way to 220, which is pretty smooth. If uh, anybody works with hard wood, you know what I'm talking about. It's uh, it's almost like porcelain. Yeah. That's how smooth it is. So this is a stain that I previously liked. So we're going to test out, I don't know, do you want to test out half of it with this, yeah, half of the other one, yeah, or what, we, do you, what are you thinking? I'll hit it all on this side because we got light, dark, kind of the knots and everything. Yep. we got a real good combination. Of Sounds all good. Of so, so this is a, a glaze, a gel stain, I guess, dark yeah. walnut. Um, so what, wax on, wax off wax kind of thing? Wax on, wax off. <laughs> and as you can see, there's a little kind of brown, green kind of tint to it. It's just not a... Like a brown, like a dark. Yeah, so we'll let that kind of rub it in good. Okay, now when I did that test strip, I, I kind of put it on, left it for not very long at all, yeah. and then I just immediately rubbed it off after 30 seconds or yeah. something. Well, we can always check the can <laughs> <laughs> for instructions. I'll wipe, completely wipe it off, but you want to just enough to get all that, any yep. of those high points or any real globs out of there. Yeah, it's a little bit darker than my sample piece over there. Mm -hmm. 
But yeah, what a difference. I mean, where the white white becomes in there. Yeah, look at all the grain the that dark just... dark gets that real brown, that real rich yeah. brown color. Huh. I'm not... The darker knots get real dark. Yeah. All yep. Real dark. I'm not super sold on that dark walnut because my piece over here was a little bit different, guys. Check out the difference. Now, this is a little bit different uh, of a piece. Yeah, mine was a lot lighter. Than that. Although this is still a little on the wet side, so that could change while it dries. So yeah. the next yep. couple days, hmm. I'm not sure. Maybe I think we should try this one. Might we'll have to. One. Yeah. By the way, this is countertop number two right here. Countertop number two. Hmm. That sit for a minute. All right. I'm almost like on the left side more. <laughs> what do you think? I, I like that. I mean, it, you still get the dark, you know, and the, all of the grains do get yep. dark, but it's not as overpowering. Black -black yeah, kind of, uh, yeah, that's true. There is a lot of dark grain that kind of matches in with, you know, the darker color. Kind of, uh, yeah, kind of camouflages the two different colors together. So, I mean, right now I'm thinking this one. Let's try a, a light white and see what happens. All right, a little change of plans here. It looks like. Uh, this was the uh, so this is a full soaking of the dark, full soaking of the light, and I think I'm a fan of this one. This was a quick wipe of the dark and a quick uh, wipe of the light uh, walnut. But yeah, just I, I like what it's doing to that part. Uh, so what do you say? Is that a winner? <laughs> I'm a little worried about this because. It'll come we out. have You'll both be, light and dark, yeah. so I'm just. All the dark, and now with the way we have the light right next to the dark, the dark will really seem dark. Yeah. And the dark, all these ones will come out and look much darker because they're right next to these very whiter ones, you know. Well, worst case scenario, we could darken each dark square, right? You could. It's okay. Be a lot of work, but okay. yeah, yeah, it can be done. <laughs> <laughs> all right. This is, uh, this is what we're looking like right now. All right, we're going for it, guys. I'm not a woodworker, and so I don't know how this is gonna come out, but, you know, I trust Eric, and uh, you know, if we need to make it darker, we always can. So I'm gonna jump in and give him a hand. This is what it looks like after we put the stain on. And uh, wow, is all I gotta say. This is gonna be a, a similar color pattern to the uh, countertops. However, these are the dark pieces. So the countertop's gonna be a little bit on the lighter side with some of these other colors. But um, Eric being the uh, perfectionist that he is, fine detailed. <laughs> uh, custom chess table maker. There's a couple uh, lines from the uh, belt sander, so I think he's gonna do a little sanding. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll wait until it dries out good, and then do another. Yep. Light sand just on the board itself. And gotcha. Then, uh, yeah, he just wants everywhere to. Everywhere else, we're looking pretty good. He wants to make sure everything is just right. But uh, I'd imagine when you're going against the grain, that's what happens, though. Anyways, right? Yeah, you go okay. across the yep, across the grain lines. Yep. Yeah. So a little, a little bit there, yep. a little there and there, but otherwise, yeah. phenomenal job. Wow. And what a unique, one of a kind piece here. So, um, yeah. Like I said, anybody want to play some chess? Come on over. You know where I live. <laughs>